When you're trying to remove something that has a textured surface and is on an angle of any kind, you're going to run into a lot of problems. To give you an example of what I mean here, let me zoom into this photo. I'll create a new layer, select my clone stamp tool by pressing S, and then I'll just set my sample point somewhere over here and then go and try to remove these two chickens from the mural. Now, at first it seems okay, but when we look a little bit closer, you'll notice that the textures from our clone stamp do not line up, and that is because of the slight angle of the wall, which makes the textures in this area have different spacing than the textures in this area. Now, of course, you might not want to go and work in small little sections to make sure that the texture is absolutely perfect, and honestly, you don't have to because there is a way simpler way of doing things using the vanishing point filter inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to delete this adjustment so we're back at square one and now I'll create a new layer. With that new layer active, I'll go up to filter and down here to vanishing point. Inside of the vanishing point window, we are able to go and define a plane for the surface that we want to remove our objects from. And therefore, when we use our clone stamp tool, we'll be able to replicate the angle of that surface. And so all of our textures are going to line up perfectly and make our life a lot easier. To define our plane, we'll make sure that the plane tool is enabled, which should be by default when you access the vanishing point filter. And we want to go and click in an area to define our first anchor point of our plane. Now I'll just drag down to another part of the wall and I'll try my best to align that path of the plane along a natural edge within the photo. So in this case, I'm just aligning everything with the vertical bricks in the image. I'll click again and now move over to the other area of the wall, again lining that path along a natural edge in the photo. And finally, we want to go and place this final anchor point along a similar edge to our original so that we perfectly match the plane of this image. Clicking there to complete the plane, now we have defined the angle of the wall that we want to go and edit. And inside of the vanishing point filter, we actually have a clone stamp tool that we can work with directly so that all of our adjustments match this particular angle. Clicking on the clone stamp tool within the vanishing point window, you can choose your settings as needed. But for this example, I'll opt for a higher hardness. Make sure your opacity is at 100%, heal is set to off, and I'll leave aligned checked for this example. Now I'll zoom into the image, hold Alt or Option, and click within the plane that I want to edit. It's now going to turn green, and you'll notice that the cursor preview of our clone stamp adjustment now sits at the same angle as the wall. Notice how it is much larger here, and slowly gets smaller and smaller, as I go over to the other side of the defined plane. That is not because I am changing my brush size, it is only because Photoshop knows that this area is closer to camera than this area, so naturally your textures are going to decrease in size the further away they go from your camera. So with this in mind, let's get to work removing this logo. I'll hold Alt or Option to set my sample point, then go and align that sample texture with another similar texture within the photo. Now click and drag out to paint that clone stamp adjustment. I'll reset my sample point back here by holding Alt or Option and clicking. Align the texture within another area of the photo. Click and drag out to remove that once again. And we'll repeat this a couple of times until everything has been removed from this particular section. Now with relative ease, I was able to perfectly match up the angle of all of these bricks as I painted down without having to do any complex sampling. I was pretty much using the same sample point the entire time, and because of the plane that we have defined, Photoshop is going to make that sample look smaller and smaller and match with the existing textures that are further away from camera. To give you one more example here, I'll hold Alter Option, set my sample point, align that texture with another relative texture in the image and just go and paint over like so. And again, look how easily all of those textures line up for us. We can just go and align that clone preview with another texture in the photo and just paint around as necessary and everything will line up for us super easily. 
Now, of course, you might still run into some little problems, such as around here, there is a missing texture as well as here. But just by repeating this process, setting your sample point, aligning your cursor, and then painting as needed, you can pretty much fix all of this stuff within this vanishing point window. It doesn't take too much time, just a little bit of patience with the sampling and aligning of all of the different textures in your photo. Now, of course, this does take a little bit of time and I've already gone ahead and removed this entire logo from the wall. However, there are some problems that you might run into after doing these adjustments, which is what I want to quickly share with you. After you've applied your clone adjustments, we'll click OK to exit that window. And now all of those adjustments have been applied onto that new layer that we created previously. The problem, however, is that little things around the edge of your clone adjustment might be visible. For example, you can see this direct line around the edge of the area that we just removed. You also might see a bunch of repeating textures, which is very common when you're using the clone stamp tool. But to fix this, we can use the remove tool. And that's exactly what I did in the example I did before recording this video. In this previous project, you can see I have my remove tool layer as well as the vanishing point layer. So on the vanishing point layer, all of these adjustments were created within the vanishing point window that you just saw. However, like I mentioned before, there are some clear edges to the clone stamp adjustments as well as some repeating textures that kind of ruin the quality of this image. So to fix that, we can create a new layer and use the remove tool to simply go and just paint little areas over those repeating textures. And it does a pretty good job to fix these things, adding a bit of a variance in texture as well as correct any broken lines or things like that. When you work in small areas with this tool, it works a lot better than if you try to do large sweeping areas at once. But after going around the entire wall, which is what I did previously before recording this video, I'll just re-enable that layer. And now you can see how it just blends things in a little bit better, removes some of those duplicated textures, and just makes things look a little bit more put together overall. So here is our before and now our after using our vanishing point with the clone stamp tool, as well as the remove tool to help fix up any repeating textures or weird lines that appear in our final result. So using these two tricks here, you can pretty much remove objects from any surface, from any texture with relative ease, although it will still take a little bit of patience. Now, of course, there are tons of ways to remove objects inside of Photoshop, but one of the best ways recently is using generative fill. There are some downsides to to it, but I break down everything you need to know to remove objects using generative fill in this video here, which will show you a super powerful way to remove larger objects from your photos with relative ease. I hope to see you there next.